Our podcast lead presenter, David Balkwell, has 30 years of certification assessment experience and has undertaken over 7,000 days of certification assessment. He worked full-time for BSI as operations manager for 10 years before setting up his own business carrying out independent certification assessment over the last 20 years with 19 accredited certification bodies. ISO Builder is a registered trademark of Bockwell Limited. All online content is protected by international copyright and the Trademarks Act 1994. ISO Builder Online is not responsible, liable, nor necessarily support views as expressed by our podcast presenters in any way. They are their own interpretation and views. We accept no liability for any content. Patrons should always source conformatory opinions regarding interpretations of management systems in relation to their own situation and intended use. No content is intended to be offensive in any way. We have a few questions that have been sent in. Um, How many do we have? We have uh, five questions. So we can run a session finally on these five questions. The first one is how much notice would an organization need to give to its certification body to change from OH SAS 18001 to ISO 45001? Well the window for migration was set at three years and um, ISO 45001 was introduced in March 2018 so the three year period takes us to March 2021 for the shutoff. However, there has been a six month extension to this, so that now takes us to September 2021. So, at this point in time, certification bodies are still undertaking what are termed as migrations, and it's important that uh, you give your certification body as much notice as possible to ensure that that migration goes smoothly. Many certification bodies require a mandatory gap analysis so speak to your certification body to establish what they expect from you but good planning is probably the most important thing to ensure that the migration from 18,000 to 45,000 is as smooth as as it possibly could be. The second question is we what is the change what are the changes in relation to the new definition of worker? Well worker is an all inclusive phrase uh, which would include workers of all levels within the organization and those that are not directly employed such as contractors and outsourced service or product suppliers. And although organisations are unique, of course, or those sorts of organisations particularly, uh, this would need to be considered and demonstrated as part of the health and safety system at any any audit against 45,000 requirements. Question number three. What... Do we have to do... Okay, so uh, this question is regarding how do I link in a 45,000 system clauses 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3 to determine risks and opportunities. Well, if you're already certified to ISO 9001 you should be reasonably familiar with how the information is gathered from clauses 4.1, 4.23 and then to risk and opportunities modelling and the same for ISO 14001 so there is no difference Uh, I would follow the same modelling that uh, you have for quality and for environment however if you're um, if you are looking at certification or looking or have single certification for health and safety, then it's important that you understand how the information does flow from uh, from scope to context to interested parties um, to their needs and expectations, and then on to the determination of risk and opportunities. 
We do actually run a separate section or uh, session on understanding risks and opportunities, risk based thinking. So it might be worth tuning into to that session as well. That's uh, scheduled down the line. So for me, certainly, and my experience, that information is best presented, managed, and certainly easier to demonstrate when it's horizontal rather than in uh, bundles. So when we have interested parties in one place, uh, their needs and expectations, the uh, context in a different place, and then how we determine risk and opportunity really needs to be in some format that you can see the information flow from each of those steps. So I would suggest you listen into a further session on that, but it pretty much sums up the answer to the question. The next question, does ISO 45000 replace the need for other certifications such as 14,000 and 9,000? No, no, definitely not. ISO 45001 is designed for occupational health and safety systems and although follows the same structure in Annex SL as the requirements for 14,000 and for 9,000, um, clearly ISO 45001 and a health and safety management system focuses on different disciplines to environment and quality. So there are unique things in each of the of the discipline standards. But the structure is still the same regarding to Annex SL, but it's very important that the individual requirements of the standards, in this case 45001, are fulfilled. So they are different. And finally, um, I think this the answer to this question has possibly been touched on earlier, but can I still get 18,000 um, between now and when the uh, the final date, September 21, um, appears? So really this, there isn't a great deal of point in pursuing uh, certification to OH SES 18,000 and and one of most certification bodies wouldn't allow um, the progression of a stage one, stage two uh, to issue a certificate against 18,000. We're getting too close now to the cutoff, and uh, it probably wouldn't be in anybody's interest other than to pursue and to advise that a 45,000 and, um, and one certification is pursued. Um, 18,000 has uh, served its purpose and the current is ISO 45001. So that just about sums up the questions and hopefully um, some expansion and answers. Thank you. ISO Builder Online, quality information for quality managers. ISO Builder is the registered trademark of Bockwell Limited. All online content is protected by international copyright and the Trademarks Act 1994. ISO Builder Online is not responsible, liable, nor necessarily support views as expressed by our podcast presenters in any way. They are their own interpretation and views. We accept no liability for any content. Patrons should always source conformatory opinions regarding interpretations of management systems in relation to their own situation and intended use. No content is intended to be offensive in any way. Balkwell Limited, Management Systems Consultancy Audit and Training. Contact us by email, davidbalkwell at balkwellltd.com or office at balkwellltd.com. Established in 1999.